Hello and welcome to the devotion for Thursday, October the 11th, entitled, I'm Not My Own. Now, when I use that term, I'm not my own, I'm actually referring to a couple of passages in Scripture that talk about our relationship as husband and wife and our relationship to one another that we no longer are only about ourselves, looking out for our own interests, that we have joined into a union where God has made us two and taking us to one. He has made us one flesh. Now, what that means is I can't just be concerned about my own needs. I have to be concerned about the other person. Now, let's extrapolate that all the way back to sex. As we look in Ephesians 5.25, we read these words, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church, which was a willingness to give himself up for her. He died for her. In fact, I've often said, men, if you think loving your wife is about to kill you, you're almost there. Close. Just almost there. Jesus was willing to give up his life for the church. Are we willing to give up our life for our spouse? He goes on, in the same way husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. Because he who loves his wife loves himself. And each one of us must also, and each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husband. We are to love the other person with that type of intensity, to be concerned about their needs, about what's going on in their life. And it's a mutual thing. As we read in 1 Corinthians 7, starting in verse 3, it says, Husbands should fulfill his marital duty to his wife. Talk about sex. And likewise, wives to their husbands. The wife's body does not belong to her alone, but also to her husband. In the same way, the husband's body does not belong to him alone, but also to his wife. Do not depri deprive each other, uh, except for mutual consent for a time so that you may devote yourselves to prayer. Then come together again so that Satan will not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. He says, Two different places, in two different ways, our body is not our own. Our life is not our own. We have committed to one another, and we should not deprive each other. We should allow sex to be something that is, I use my body to give as a gift to my wife, that she gives herself to me as a gift, and that we honor one another, and that we respect one another, and that we love one another. Because when there is mutual respect, when there is health, when there is life, when there is passion, I'm telling you, I've never known a woman that didn't want to have a physical relationship with someone that she knows would die for her, would lay down his life for her, that would sacrifice for her, that sees her needs as much as he sees his own needs. Women long for that type of a man, and they want to be in relationship with that type of a man. They have trouble when they don't believe that the man cares about them, that all they want is their body. They're not willing to lay down their life for them. They're not willing to sacrifice for them. And men, Many times we think the number one thing that we want is physical attention. But I have found that for most men there is something more powerful than physical attention. It is when their wife, or even their girlfriend for that matter, gives them the sense that they are the most important thing in their life. We desire respect and honor and, uh, and that uh, support. In fact, it says there, respect the wife must respect her husband. Why? Because respect is the number one thing that men crave. We want to know that our wife thinks we're the hottest thing on the planet, that they believe in us. Our ego ends up being more important even than our sex drive when it comes down to truly being fulfilled. And so here's the things, and I'm just going to reiterate a couple of things I said Sunday morning. One another, according to the scripture, sex should be vital, pleasurable, frequent part of a committed union between a husband and and a wife. A sexual act should not degrade, devalue, or humiliate one person for the pleasure of the other. If we ever do that, somebody's going to check out. The person that is feeling degraded or humiliated or something that they don't want to be a part of, they will eventually begin to stop being involved. They will pull away and eventually that relationship is going to deteriorate. May, uh, making sex a game 
takes the focus off of our spouse and communicates that our spouse is not enough. We never want to make it a gain. It needs to be a place where we are connecting, both in physically and also emotionally and uh, in our life spiritually. Games oftentimes come across as you're not enough. Sex must draw us together. And then I finished with this statement. If activities are mutually shared and the focus is on being together with the person that I have this relationship with, bringing pleasure and fulfillment, then enjoy the gift that God has given us. Enjoy that sexual relationship. So I would ask you, are you in a place, men, where you are laying down your life for your wife? Does she believe that my man would do whatever it takes to love me, to protect me, to honor me, to care for me? Wives, do you respect your husbands? He wants that more than anything else. You want him to be the husband you desire? Don't uh, take away his respect. You show him respect. Show him that you will support him, that you will love him, that you will honor him. And he, in almost every occasion, some men got great dysfunction, but almost every occasion a man will rise to the expectation of his wife. When he feels devalued, degraded, he will almost always become bitter and cynical and difficult to deal with because you have robbed him of what he needs. Women need security. Men need respect. Don't withhold the thing that we need the most. Give that and then look for health in every other area. Call health in every other area when those things are being honored as well. And then at the end, allow our lives together, our physical bodies, to be a blessing to one another. Honor one another. Let God do something big. Let him take what might have grown stale or old or cold or hurt or wounded and let him breathe life in it again. Let it start with respect. Let it start with honor. Let it start with laying down our lives and end in a great relationship that finds intimacy in every level. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we need these type of relationships. Lord, every single one of us have the ability to give honor and respect. We also have the ability to nurture and to care. And when we care for each other well, when we nurture well, when we respect, when we give honor, it pays the way for everything else that we need. Let us understand the truth of these scriptures and live them out with commitment so that our lives, even our sex life, will be vibrant and incredible. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, guys. Live that one out. I'll see you tomorrow.